Thanks to Joe Green's hands and Joe Green took off. That kick I missed. They could feel the wind, but it never touched it. <laughs> <laughs> And then I just started believing everything I saw. Went to seven straight Pro Bowls after that. James Harrison made the hit that caught the ball loose. I want to be the guy, not that guy. Yeah. Oh, Troy came up over the top. When I'm out there, I'm defending the Steelers. I'm defending you guys. Did you ever have a moment in the year that you won Defensive Player of the Year that you you were there? Like, in the back of your mind, did you think, man, I keep this up. I'm going to get Defense Player of the Year. So to be honest, I never expected to win it. An indication uh, that I was on track, to, 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 that I was making noise like around the league, was when Coach Tomlin said, I don't think there's a defensive player be playing better than Troy right now. He's back as time throws the out far side. I need accept it. The Steelers have it. Troy Polamalu jumped in front of the Woodbury receiver, and the Steelers are back in business. When I heard that, I'm like, really? Like, I'm looking at all my mistakes me? that I'm, yeah. <laughs> so to me, like, that, that was really my mentality. But that's what made you so good. Say that what you just said. All the You said all, you was listening to all yeah, the things yeah. you did wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. Not all the things yeah. you did right. Yeah. That's what, I, I think that's the difference between guys who can and do become defensive player of the year than other guys. Because I did the same thing throughout my career. Every time I did a game, every time I did a practice, I always wrote down my mistakes, not yeah. what I did right. Yeah. Over and over and over, yeah. tried to eliminate those over time, yeah. and then hopefully become a better player down the line. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a great mindset to have, especially to become defensive player of the year. You can't keep thinking about what you did well. No. Oh yeah, yeah. You can't sit there and just keep patting yourself on the back. Like, the biggest thing for me, same thing with Troy, is yeah, I wasn't thinking that I was going to win because I'm looking at the things I did wrong. I missed tackles here. Damn, that's a sack I could have got there. Ah, that's an impact play that I, that I missed there. And you're just looking at other guys, and you're like, oh, they're not missing those plays. They're not, they're not you know. And for me, it was just, like, I'm trying to make every single play I can make just because I want to help my team. And the biggest thing is I wanted Dick LeBeau's defense to look like what it was supposed to look like. Yeah, oh yeah. I did not want to be the dude oh, man. Yeah. that guy. No. Like, you want to be the guy, but not that guy. Right. Yeah. I want to be the guy, <laughs> not that guy. Yeah. I mean, think about the history, though, of Steeler defense. And it starts with Mr. Green here, two-time defensive player of the year in the National Football League. And I remember watching him, like how mean he was. I remember him stepping on people, stepping on hands. Throwing the ball into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing helmets in the sidelines. I'm like, then when I walked in and he was my defensive, he was a defensive line coach when I got here. And just to see him in person, I mean, first oh, of all, man. it scared the snot out of me, right? Because that's oh, yeah. me, Joe Green. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I didn't know if I should say hello. Not say hello? Should I look at Listen, him when I'm talking to him? First like, time I see him, I'm like, do I talk to him? Do I say anything to him? I'm like, I don't know what I should do. <laughs> see, that wasn't meant for the teammates. It was meant for the other guys <laughs> to get you on tape. And then they'll say, well, I probably shouldn't fall on the back of his leg because he might step on me. OK. See? That's, that's why. I, some of those, they were misses. I was acting out. I was being an actor. Exactly. <laughs> I was acting out. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You got, you got, to, you got to play the role. You got to, play the role. You got to have a persona. You got to let them see it. Yeah, let so them they see know, it. don't go and test it. There you go. This is what might happen to you. And if, you know, if they hesitate, that means you got a little bit more leeway. Exactly. Now, you, you come out with your legs intact. They hesitate. <laughs> and the hesitation is that kick out. Missed. They could feel the wind, but they never touched it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I actually, to me, that was probably the most troublesome part about coming into uh, this organization was that, like, the standard was high to be great, but there was a certain way you had to be great. Like, you couldn't take crap from anybody. 
What you want to do? Hey, 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 don't do that, don't do that. To me, that, that's a very different level of, because like, I can defend or not defend myself, but when I'm out there, I'm defending the I'm defending the Steelers. I'm defending you guys. So like, yeah. the last thing I want to do is not only disappoint Coach Bo, but like to to sit there and like, man, he ain't one of us. Did you see him get smacked up? So for me, that's one thing that it was trouble for me. I'm like, oh God, man, when it comes like when it comes for me to fight, I have to. <laughs> you even though I don't fight. want to, even if we don't want to, I have to. So I was just like, oh, oh just goodness. like dreading those those moments <laughs> because. That was the standard. Yeah, except like, when we were in San Diego. Yeah, well, yeah, I lost it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I went native, as they said. Somebody, somebody, <laughs> man, totally, man. totally. Who, he went berserk? I can't even say what he said. <laughs> okay, but all of a sudden you hear, you know how you can hear Troy's voice. It's like this soft world, <laughs> but it's high-pitched hollering. <laughs> you, no, 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 no. It's over with for you. Ten and done. Beep, beep. <laughs> I'm like, is that Troy? <laughs> the whole defense loses it. Oh, we're going crazy. We're uh, like Troy with us now. <laughs> the strength of the Steeler defense is the front four. Number 68, L.C. Greenwood. Number 75, Joe Green. Number 63, Ernie Holmes. And number 78, Dwight White. How, like, what was your guys' mindset every time you guys stepped on the field, being especially named Steel Curtain at that time? Oh, my goodness. It was, um, I mean, I had to look at my left, my right tackle, Ernie Holmes. And Ernie would say, hey, see, Joe, I got, I got papers. What's your issue? What's your problem? He got papers to say he's crazy. He says it's documented. It's documented. Huh? <laughs> but um, what's your excuse? <laughs> we we would not individually up front. We could not lose individual battles. Sometimes we played Cleveland. And they had a coach over there that thought that the way to beat the Steelers was to intimidate us. And, you know, he went the wrong direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when did you realize, hey, I, I'm pretty good. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I, I could, we all think we know, can we play in this league, how good are we going to be in this league? But when is, like, when did that aha moment, like, you know what, I'm not bad. I'm all right. These dudes better watch out. I never got there because I, there was a lot of times over the course of my career that I, so when are you going to start playing football and stop fighting? Hey Cleveland, how you like us now? So I never did get to the point where I said I was good. I was going to make you play because mm -hmm. that was the desire for me was to win the ball game. Always. Win the ball game. That's why I threw that football up in the stands. We were playing the Philadelphia Eagles, and we were leading those guys by two, three touchdowns. And they had a guy named Hawkins. You don't know anything about him. But he scored three touchdowns. And going into the fourth quarter, late into the fourth quarter, two minutes to play, they're on our two-yard line, and they're up a touchdown. And I <laughs> reached over and picked up the ball and threw it away and walked off the field. <coughs> and I didn't get fined. You did too. I didn't get fined. Yeah. The true story here. When I went in to tell Dan that I was going to retire, and he said, uh, Joe, you remember that day in Philadelphia? When you threw the ball in the stands, I said, oh, man, after all these years, this was 13 years. And he said, I felt that same way. Mm -hmm. I felt that same way. And I think that that's, that is the primary reason I could play right. on this right. team. 
and there's probably a few other teams I couldn't play on for the antics <laughs> that I did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, Troy, I was bad. <laughs> we saw the film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was documented. Yeah. No, it was, that's what about you set guys? the standard. I think, I, think, I think more for us, uh, our, our mindset was the steel curtain. We wanted to be able to be in that argument that maybe these guys could be as good as that defense was back then. Was there a moment like in your, where you said, you know what, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I, I can I can play in this league. I would like to hear your your you know, moment. I ain't gonna lie. It was the 2007 when I first got my start. It was uh, playing against Baltimore. Steelers blitz. He's hit. James Harrison has another sack, and down goes McNair. Boy, James Harrison is having a great great night. James Harrison went boogly woogly right through the middle. Just blew through a guy that forced a fumble. It was like I could do no wrong, and I felt like I wasn't even really trying. I was just you had a doing. Bet to be paid. Like no, I was yeah. just, it was crazy. I've never had that feeling since then. And it was a couple. One time, I wasn't even supposed to be rushing. I just took off. Said I'm gonna get to the quarterback. Sack. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. foot. Foot was like, bro. That was my sack. I'm like, nah. <laughs> like that was mine. I just, I was like, something was like, just go. You can get there. That's I'm awesome. supposed to drop in the curl flat. No, no, no. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Troy? When, when was that uh, that moment for you? One of the most special moments for me is that my rookie year was. Uh, I came in, I think, with a lot of hype. So my rookie year wasn't like very successful at all. Uh, definitely not up to my standards or or the Steelers' standards. So after my second year, we went 15 and one. Our defense is number one uh, in the league. And then Coach Cowher used to have this tradition because of the way that they used to announce uh, the Pro Bowl. So you would be able to announce the Pro Bowl in front of the team Ooh, before yeah. you get home and find out on TV. That's right. That's right. So, and it was like week 14 or week 15. So it wasn't even towards the end of the season. So this was actually my second year. And I'm, I'm not even, understanding anything he brings everybody together and we were 15 and 1 I think we had like 10 dudes in the in the Pro Bowl but we get to number 11 and he says my name last and then like the whole team like just were were so much more congratulatory towards me because they knew like my struggle was much different than than theirs because I came in with the hype and then I was just like it was just that whole first year was, was tough I isolated myself and then when they saw like how I grew a lot that second year it was huge for me because it, it was like a level of acceptance as well because I always tell people is like you know you can be a great person you can be a great friend but this this profession is about production you know like you gotta it, you gotta be able to produce out mm -hmm. there so for me it was just like I, I brought it all together and I was able to produce for everybody and earn their respect the real way so the way that we had done things was like really, I mean, scrubbing toilets is the way, you know, like I felt like coming in, like, you know, you got to scrub toilets if you're a rookie. You know, those scrubbing toilets are taking all the special team reps and preseason, <laughs> taking all, you know what I mean? Like just doing all of that, that was me. So I was really, really happy that I, I like went through the whole rigmarole of, of the, the, the football experience. Yeah, I know yeah. for me, I was with Tony for two years and Tony was really good for me because I was I played safety my whole life, and they moved me to corner, and I needed somebody to like to teach me how to play corner and not yell at me and scream at me, and cuss at me, <laughs> great, right. exactly, right? exactly. And so I needed Tony in my life. Mm -hmm. Tony leaves, then we get Rod Russ and John Fox. Now Johnny was a green coach, but Rod Russ was really the guy to kind of initiate the switch in my brain, and he challenged me to learn the game more than just being an athlete. I was like, well, teach me. So then he was like, okay. I was like, I don't, I don't have no family, I don't got no wife, I don't got anything, just teach me. So we went into his office, mm -hmm. we sat down, his first question to me is, how many formations can an offense get into? I was like, oh, shoot, coach, <laughs> 500, 600, I don't know. He was like, how many eligible receivers? I was like, five. He was like, they can get in five formations. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They confuse you by putting different personnel groupings in, moving different pieces around, and then that final formation, 
they only run so many routes out of that or have so many runs out of that. Mm -hmm. Irrelevant of if he's the X, if he's in tight, if he's out wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they started, we start watching film probably like four weeks into it. I'm like, Bing. Mm -hmm. And then I just started believing everything I saw. And I would put my foot in the ground and went to seven straight Pro Bowls after that. My first one oh, was yeah. at kick return of those on special teams. But then just learning, having those guys, and those guys then, that's when Chuck retired, and then Dick LeBeau, Dom Cables, and Bill Coward come in. And then what I loved about Dick, man, he would just let me be me. Mm -hmm. He's like, jump out of your stance, but you can. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm okay, you go ahead yeah, and do yeah. that thing. I mean, that's what I love wow. about him, where some coaches be like, you jump out of your stance, I don't want you to jump out of your stance, yeah, you yeah. gotta be patient, don't move your feet, don't back up. All the little things that kind of get in your head as a player mm -hmm. and kind of bog you down. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's what, that's what Dick would allow you to do. I remember watching you. First and goal at the one. Yeah. Oh, they tried to sneak it. Troy. Oh, Troy came up over the top and Colin said, where'd that airplane come from? And I'm like, I called him. Like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, why you let him do this and this and this? And he was like, because he can. <laughs> <laughs> I said, touche, touche. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he just, he just, he let us be us inside of the system. He yeah. allowed us to bring on uniqueness inside a system. You rushing when you're like, ah, I'm dropping, but I feel it. I should be going that way. Oh, yeah. And you go, and that's what we let Greg Lloyd do it all the time. So allowing us to be us inside of the system, I think would have would made us become really good players mm -hmm. because we didn't let we didn't let coaches didn't bog us down with some of the rhetoric that you hear, you know, like middle of field safety. Yeah, yeah. Be in the middle of the field, stay in the middle of the field until yeah, you yeah. see the long arm. Long arm. <laughs> when if he's throwing that ball, it's too late. Yeah. Like, I, can't, yeah. I can't run that ball. Yeah. So you gotta allow players to like get the feel and be who they are, and that's what I know me being here with Tony and Dick and and Rod Russ and Bill Cowher. Well, Coach Lebeau I mean, would tell us a lot of times, he'd be like, you know, I'm not going to take your eyes from you. I'm not out there on the field. Absolutely. I can't tell you what you're seeing in that moment that may make you want to do something else that could, you know, help the team. It may hurt eventually every now and then, but I'm going to let you go out there and take what you call uh, – Calculated risk. Calculated yeah, yeah. risk. Calculated <laughs> risk. That's one thing I used to love what he used yeah. to say. He used to come to the sideline and says, what did you see? What were you thinking? Yeah. It wasn't like, why did you do that? Right. But then you would follow say, I thought, and he would say, ah, I thought I never made a play. <laughs> 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 but of course I thought, ah, oh, I thought I never made a play. Then he just walk off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's the perspective of, of a player to, to understand like there's some nuances that are individual to a person that you just can't put everybody in a box. And um, I think that comes from his experience as a, as a great uh, Hall of Fame a player and then obviously as a coach, talking about Coach LeBeau, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that I tell myself all the time. I knew Mel Blount before he became Mel Blount. I knew Terry Bradshaw before he became Terry Bradshaw. LC before he became LC. And that's what you guys are talking about right now is you're giving kudos to your coaches that allowed you to be yourself and learn the game the proper way from yourself. And when you play, it's got to be spontaneous. It's got to be right now. It can't, you can't be sitting there and scratching your head what to do, what to do. <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what they're telling you right now. Play the way you know how to play. Coach used to tell us all the time, play the way you're being coached. Don't let anyone take you out of how you're being taught to play. And that way you build, you build confidence. And once you get the confidence, like you say, when the green light went out, oh my goodness, you can play. <laughs>